At 18, Maya's professor told her she couldn't pursue science because she couldn't pour properly. A tremor in her hand made the act wobbly and slow, made worse by medication side effects, but she could explain every reaction and understood why each substance mattered. Still, her professor labeled pouring as an essential requirement. He offered no adaptations, no alternative demonstrations of competence, just a firm belief that pouring was the gateway to doing work in a lab. In other classes, Maya thrived. She presented complex lab theories, collaborated with peers, and her professors helped identify meaningful roles in, on lab teams that didn't require her to pour. Instead, she took on more complex responsibilities such as designing experiments and analyzing the results. These faculty members didn't lower expectations. They recognized that her strengths aligned with the true goals of the lab and adapted the methods to support her success. But one rigid standard could have derailed her persistence in higher education and science altogether. Maya's story isn't unique. She, like others with a disability, encounter ableist systems. She didn't fail science, but science almost failed her, especially if she believed she was not capable. Years later, Maya leads a lab. She's designing experiments that save lives. Her team uses adaptive tools, voice controls, and a robotic arm that pours solutions with more precision than a human hand. It's not a workaround, it's innovative science.